So I believe we were on the first free response question. Is that right? We're talking about this Pokemon tournament? Okay. And we only got through part one. Is that right? Figuring out what C of 3 meant? Okay. So we talked about that yesterday. And what was the value for C of 3 that we got? 35. 35. Good. And what did we say that represented? The number of cards. Okay. I did have someone come up to me after class. I think it was, was it you, Garrett? that came up and asked how we could type that into the calculator. Um, that was my fault for not going over that because some of you said you're not familiar with how to use one of these. So maybe you figured out 35 in your head, which is great, but I do want us to get used to typing things in because we will have kind of harder ones to type in as the year goes on. So just for practice, something simple. Let's go ahead and open our calculator. The on button is at the very bottom of the left hand side. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in this equation that they gave us that represented the number of cards and we're going to plug in three for all of those T's like we did yesterday. It should be on your paper. Now most of us, I'm sure, are pretty familiar with the skinny calculators like you, that you used in middle school or maybe earlier in, in your high school career. Um, you can type in a fraction very easily on that where you can see like the numerator and the denominator separately. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Okay. Um, as far as I know, this calculator can do it, but it's kind of a pain to access the function that you need in order to make it look like that. So just an easier way to type in a fraction on your calculator is to simply use division because that's what a fraction is. You're dividing two things together. So if you want to type in one third, we can simply type in one and then the division button is on the right hand side and then type in three. Okay, so there's your one third. Next comes the variable t, but we wanted to substitute in the number 3 into that spot. So in order to make a substitution, we're going to use parentheses to show what we are plugging into the equation. So your parentheses um, is kind of above the 8 button. Then we'll type in 3, and then you can use the closed parentheses. Okay, so we're showing that substitution. Next we need the power of 3. Um, on your calculator, that's this caret button right underneath the clear sign. As soon as you, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me do that real quick. As soon as you hit this caret button, the cursor should kind of move up into a little box. Does that happen on your calculator? They're all brand new, so they should all have the same operating system. Okay, so in that little box, we're going to type in 3. Now at this point I just want you to pay attention, okay? I don't want you to type anything else. Okay, just look up at the board. If you were to continue typing, notice how everything else would still be in that exponent spot, right? We don't want that to happen, okay? So I'm going to clear that out. Notice how that little cursor that's blinking, it has an arrow in it. We're going to use the arrow button to bring the cursor back down. That way we don't continue typing in that exponent spot. Okay, so just be aware of that. If we continue through the equation, we want a minus two. There's another T, so we'll throw in a three in those parentheses. Then we need a power of two. You can use the caret button in the same way, but there's actually a shortcut key over here on the left hand side above the log button. If you hit that, it automatically does two, just because quadratics are very, very common. Are we doing okay so far? Okay, um, if we continue through the equation, we need a minus two, plug in three, and then lastly, plus 50. And there we get the 35 that we got from yesterday. Okay, so we're going to get familiar today, tomorrow, the rest of this unit, the rest of this year, utilizing this calculator. Are we doing okay so far? All right, let's go ahead and continue through some of these questions that we have going on here. So we finished two, or sorry, one, which is great. Good morning. Anything for the office this morning? 
I think we're good. Happy Friday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's check out two. What does C of T equal 40 mean? We got to bring back that function notation that we were discussing yesterday, input versus output, but now we have some meaning behind it. What do you think that notation might represent? Mike, yeah. Like the amount of time it takes to get to 40 minutes. There we go. The time, which we're talking about days, okay, so the number of days, the time it takes to get 40 cards. Perfect. That's what we're going to try to figure out, or in this case, estimate. All right, so in terms of using our equation, where can we um, kind of plug in that 40? Is it an input or an output? It's an output, okay? It's representing a card amount. So our setup would look like 40 equals the equation. Now our goal is to try to figure out what is T. Okay, what is the time during the seven day tournament where he has 40 cards? Now, if you take a look at the top part, when we did B yesterday, very similar function notation setup, weren't we pretty easily able to solve for X in that case? Okay, that's because we only had one X in our equation. We were able to solve for it. If you take a look at this setup, we have three T's going on, right? Trying to get one T all by itself might be daunting or difficult, okay? This is when we're gonna use a calculator to kind of make our life a little easier. Not to do the thinking for us, but to make the understanding of the math a little easier, okay? We are going to graph this equation. So we're gonna get a picture, a visual of it, to help us kind of see what's going on. Now on your calculator, I want you to take a look at this Y equals button at the very top. Okay, go ahead and select that. Whenever you want to graph something, you're gonna hit that button. And this is where you're gonna type in the equation you want to graph. Now, if we look at our equation, we have two parts. On the first side, we have a 40. So we're gonna graph that in Y1. Okay, so notice how here it says y1. That's just representing the first equation you want to graph. In that spot, let's go ahead and type in 40. The other side of the equation, okay, all this stuff, we're going to type in y2. All right, so let's arrow down to y2. We're going to type in 1 divided by 3. Now, on your paper, we're using the variable t, but normally we have x's, right? On your calculator, the x button is right next to alpha. I think it's green on your calculator. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that button to bring up the x. Next, we need that power of three. So we'll use the caret, little arrow. Make sure you arrow back down and we'll continue typing in. Minus two, we need the x, square it, minus two x plus 50. Does anybody need help? Don't be shy. So far so good? Okay, before we hit graph, Okay, the graph button's on the top right-hand side. Before we hit graph, I want you to hit the window button. The window is a way you can scale the portion of the graph that you want to see. Okay, we don't want to have a really, really big graph, okay, like a big coordinate plane, which is going to make our graph this small. Okay, you're able to scale what you're able to see with this graph. So the X min and the X max is representing how far left you want to go on the graph and how far right you want to go on the graph, what you want to be able to see. Now, what did we say the T variable represented from yesterday? Did we write that down or discuss it? Can you think about this scenario again and think about what T might mean? 
time, okay? And we're specifically talking about days. So if you think about this tournament lasting seven days, what is the lowest day value you could possibly have? Can you have a negative day? No? What do you think the lowest day value you might have? Zero. Zero is representing the starting day, okay, the, at the very beginning. So we'll let the x min be zero. What do you think the x max should be? Seven, right? That's how long the tournament is. Going to 10 might not make sense, so we'll go ahead and select seven. So we only want to have zero to seven days. That makes sense because that's how long the tournament is. The X scale, okay, SCL, stands for um, what you want to count by, kind of your tick marks on the graph. So if you're going from zero to seven, do you want to count by ones? Do you want to count by twos? You can make it whatever you want. Do you think ones would be a, a good fit? Okay, so we'll keep that. Next, we'll do the same thing with the Ys. So this is how low you want to see on the graph and how high. What did we say the C of T represented? in this scenario? Number of cards, okay? What do you think the lowest number of cards might be? Zero. What do you think the highest amount of cards might be? Do we know? No. So this is a guess, okay? Um, can we, do you just want to guess with 10? We can always come back and change it. We already know he has 35 cards at some point, right? Okay, maybe we'll go a little bit higher than 35. Maybe we'll do 50. Okay, we can always go back and change it. Now, what do you want to count by? If you go from 0 to 50, do you think you want to count by 1s, 2s, 5, 10s? You can make it whatever you want. 5s? Oops. Okay, so Y scale will be 5. There are some other settings on there like the X res and the delta x, we are not going to touch those, okay? We're just gonna do the maxes and mins and scales, okay? Are we kind of clear in understanding what this window does for us, how we can tailor what we see, okay? So now that we have the equations in and the window set, I want you to hit graph. Now we all have in the same equations and we all have the same window, so we should all have the same picture. Do you think that's pretty good? Pretty clear cut? Okay, so if this is a picture of the function for the amount of cards and the straight line is that 40 value we typed in, where do you think we should be looking on this graph to help us answer this question? During what day would he have 40 cards? Can we analyze this picture? Can I go ahead, Michael? Yeah? Uh, How'd you get that? So you're looking here and yeah. here. We're looking at intersection points. That's awesome. Okay? Take a look at th just the way your equation is set up. We want to figure out when is 40 equal to, meaning exactly the same as this equation. So graphically, two things are equal or exactly the same when they touch or cross each other. Okay, so we want to try to figure out those points. So Michael estimated about two and, and six, right? We can get a little bit more accurate, okay, but that's a good estimation. So now that we have this picture, go ahead and hit the trace button. You should have what I call a little spider pop up or a little cursor. You can use the arrow buttons to move that. So for instance, if we want to move it to the left, we can probably guess a little bit more accurately where that intersection is. So Michael, I guess a two was really, really good. Okay, notice how close that is, okay? Um, and we can keep going if you want to go to the other side. I'd say six is pretty good as well, okay? So those are really good estimates. Let's go ahead and write those down. So we'll say T is about two and six. They hung up on me. Okay. 
Are we doing okay with the calculator so far? Okay. Is anyone interested in knowing how you can find those, in, or those intersection points exactly, like without guessing? Yes. Okay. Um, let's try this out. So this trace button that we initially hit to bring up that spider, we want to go to the calculate menu, which is in blue right above it. Now, since it's written in blue, you have to hit the second button first. So I want you to hit second and then trace. Notice how option five says intersect. So we're going to scroll down and hit enter to select that command. So how this works is I want you to move the little spider to where you think that intersection point is and hit enter three times. After hitting enter three times, the word intersection should pop up at the bottom of your screen and it's going to give you the exact ordered pair of that intersection point. So Michael's guess of six days is, is wonderful. It's actually 6.186. So it's a little bit into the sixth day, not at the beginning of the sixth day. So we can get very accurate with this command. Just for practice, let's try it again. We'll hit second, trace, down to option five. We'll use the cursor to scroll it over to where we think an intersection is and hit enter three times. So the exact intersection is 2.111. Would it be useful for us to write down those buttons like as a reference to press? Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down. We'll say intersection. We need to hit the second button and then trace. We're going to choose, I think it was option five that said intersection. We'll say move spider to your guess. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, you too. Are they still excited in the English wing? Not so much today. Not no. so much today. All well, right. They're, they're, like, Conge is giving people a quiz right now. Cooper's giving a quiz right now. So. Uh -huh. We're learning how to use our calculators today. Well, if you have your non-conjecture in there. Yeah. <laughs> right now. So, he pre -tech. Gotcha. Pre-tech. How long is that ceiling top down there? How long? Or why not? Both. Both. Um, since in-service started, it was like that on Monday. All right, so second trace, we're going to choose option five. Move the spider or the cursor to where you think the intersection is, and then we'll hit enter three times, times three. All right, we'll do that again a little bit later because we're going to have another free response question to, to go over. So far, so good? All right. Let's try three. What does the y-intercept mean? Now, it's nice that we already have a picture because maybe we can find the y-intercept. Kind of looks like it happens right there. Can we figure out the value of that y-intercept and then kind of discuss what we think it represents now that we have our scale or tick marks? Do we know anything special about a y-intercept? Yeah, Michael, you're on a roll today. Isn't it like the number of cards you started with? The number of cards you started with. The starting amount of cards. Why do you think that is? If you look at the graph, okay, if this is the y-intercept all the way up there, what's the t value? or the x value at the very bottom, yeah, zero. zero. 
So time is zero, meaning the tournament just began. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how much he started with. Here's another little thing we can do on your calculator. If you, or when you hit the trace button, it brings up that little cursor. I want you to automatically type in zero. Do you see how your calculator automatically created that as an X value? If you hit enter, it will give you the Y value. Oh wait, that's the wrong equation. Never mind, we'll come back to that. I, I typed in the wrong one, or it was using a different equation. We gotta use the curve, okay? If we were, think about it, if we were to plug in zero for all those T's, what would be our starting amount of cards? Yeah? 50, all right, so C of zero was 50 cards, perfect. All right, so I want to show you what happened before. If you hit trace, I know it might be a little hard to see. At the very top, can you see how it says uh, y1 equals 40? That's the current equation that your calculator is using or analyzing. If you want to switch the equation, you have to use the up or down arrows. So for instance, if you hit the up arrow, notice how it changed the equation, right? So now, if you just hit trace and then zero, it should work. Notice how it says 50. So you can jump back and forth between, between the equations if you hit the up and down arrow. Again, it might be new to us. That's not a feature that I'm too concerned about, but just something to let you know, okay? All right, let's try the last one. What is the lowest amount of cards that Johnny had? We have a graph. Can we try to find it? Yeah. How'd you get it? All right. All right. So notice how right now if I hit trace, my spider is only moving along the solid line. We have to switch the equation. So I'm going to use the up or down arrow and that's going to change where the spider moves. Okay, so Jordan moved to the bottom. I'd say it looks like about 30. Notice how if you go left and right and you look at how your numbers change. Let's see, we have 30.9, 30.9, 30.8, 30.86. Yeah, I'd say it's about 30. That's pretty close. We're looking for that minimum value. All right. So we'll say about, bless you, about 30 cards. Okay. Are we interested in trying to figure out the exact minimum? Jordan's was an estimation. Do you think we can figure out the exact? Yeah, your calculator has that capability, okay? So, very similar to how we found the intersection point. Okay, maybe we'll write this down to help us find min or maxes, okay? We're going to hit second trace. Same two buttons as before. What option do you think we're gonna select now? Can you select one from that menu? What are we interested in? Yeah, the minimum. All right, so option number three. You would select option number four if you wanted a max, okay? Now, the buttons are a little, yes? I think I messed mine up. You did? Let's check it out.
believe me, let me know now because if we gotta take time now, that's less time we'll have to use later because we're gonna get good with these. Okay, you got it. You gotta speak up. So thank you for doing that. Okay, let's go ahead and do what? Do you know what? Do me a favor. Can we hit y equals for a moment, and we'll clear out that 40. That's no longer necessary because that was just part of number two. Does that make sense? We're trying to find the minimum of the curve. So just to make our lives easier, let's take that equation off. That way it's one less thing we have to worry about. Okay, so we'll clear out the 40. Go back again and hit graph. Now we should just have the curve. Okay, so in order to help us find a min or a max, we're gonna hit second trace. We're gonna choose option three or four, depending on what you're trying to find. Okay, this time we want a minimum. Now, this is gonna ask you a few questions. Notice how at the bottom it says left bound, okay? I want you to move the cursor to where you think the minimum is. Jordan said it was about 30. And I want you to then uh, hit the left arrow a few times. Two times, three times, four times, doesn't matter. Okay, once you hit it a few times, go ahead and select enter. Did you see that arrow on the screen pop up? Okay. The next question is a right bound. So again, I want you to go back to where you think it is, okay, that minimum, but hit the right arrow a few times and then hit enter. Okay, you should have another arrow pop up on your screen. Yes. You missed it? Okay, let's check it out. did is you narrowed in um, where you think the minimum is. Instead of making the calculator check every single point on the graph, which could take some time, it's only going to check the points um, between those two arrows. Does that make sense? You're making your calculator's life a little bit easier, which if it was you, you would appreciate that as well. Okay, so the last question is your guess. Again, go back to where you think it is and simply hit enter. It should calculate it very quickly because we gave it a small window to, to check. So the exact minimum, we'll go ahead and write this down, the exact minimum is 4.494 comma 30.868. So not only do we know the exact number of cards that he had, but we also know when that happens, right? Because the Y value we said represented cards, and we said the T value or X value was time. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down those steps again. We hit second trace, choose option three or four, depending on what you're trying to find. We'll say pick left, and right point, okay, a point on the left and a point on the right, and then take your guess. Are we hanging in there? It's a lot to sink in, I know, okay, but we're going to try another one just to get some practice, okay? Let's switch the page. Becky has a one-day layover in Vegas. She decides to gamble continuously, probably not a good idea, um, for that period of time. The following function represents her total money over that day where T is measured in hours. Okay, so they're actually kind of labeling the variables for us, which is nice. So we have hours and then total money. Let's check this out. What does B of 12 mean?
Or what do you want to do with that 12? Maybe a different question to ask. Good, Petra? Hours. It's the hours. Okay, so the 12 is representing a time. So after 12 hours, what are we trying to find? Go, Jordan. How many hours she spent gambling? Say it again. How many hours she spent gambling? Okay, so she spent 12 hours gambling. If we know that information, what can we then figure out? You want to keep going, Jordan? The total money. The total money. Good. After 12 hours, how much money does she have? All right. So let's actually figure it out. So 12 is a T or a time variable. We'll go ahead and substitute that into our equation. This one's a little bit more involved than the previous one, so go ahead and practice typing it into your calculator. All right, so on your calculator, if you hit clear a few times, that'll get rid of the graph. There is one thing, though, that we have to be careful of on this calculator. If you look at the equation, we need to type in a negative 0 0.02. Where is the negative button on your calculator? Say it again. It's under the three, okay? If you type in uh, the minus button, an error message will pop up on your calculator. So there is a different button for negatives. So the negative is right underneath uh, the number three. Go ahead and type in your function and we'll see what we get out. Any takers? Yeah? Negative 6.72. Anybody else? Agree, disagree, something different? Okay. Yeah? Agree? Okay. I'm seeing head nods. Okay. So this must represent how much money she what? That's how much money she lost. Go, ahead, Tanner. How much money she lost in four hours. So you guys see the negative and you think loss, which is completely understandable. Yeah? How much money she has. That's how much money she has. Okay, total money. Remember, this B of T is representing how much money she has, not how much money uh, she gains or loses. Okay? So if this is how much money she has, what do you think's happened over her stay? When you go to Vegas, not that you guys have yet, okay? But when you go to Vegas, you take a certain amount of money with you, right? If you lose all of it, how much do you have? Nothing, meaning zero, right? But if this answer is negative, what do you think that means? She what? She lost mo more than what she initially brought. So for instance, what's probably happening is I go to Vegas, I bring $100, I lose all of it, right? I go back to an ATM, get more money, and lose more. You see how I, if I lose everything that I initially brought, I'm at zero, but if I continue to lose, I get negative. Can, does that make sense? Because I'm losing more than what I initially brought. Or maybe she borrowed from a friend and she continued to lose, okay? So this negative, I know you see it and you think it's how much she lost, but it's her total money, like the, um, how much she is, so not only did she lose everything she had, but she lost an additional amount, okay? So I like, I like that value. All right, let's try two. What does B of T equal 80 mean? Yes, Alex. She has the total money of 
Okay, so when does she have $80? We're going to try to figure out that time in this trip, her layover. When does she have it? So where can we substitute in that 80 value into our equation? It's representing how much money we have, so it would be B of T, 80 equals the rest of the function. How do you think we can figure this time out? Can we do it by hand? Do you want to do it by hand? Probably not. Okay, if we just had one variable, that would be wonderful because we can move some things, do some algebra and get it. But we have many T's going on in there which can be a little tricky. So this is when we're going to use our calculator. Now, the thing is, I think the bell is going to ring a little bit. We'll try to see how far we can get. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot. So in your calculator, let's go ahead and select y equals. We're going to clear out anything that's in there because we're going to type in some new information. Let's type in 80 into y1 and we'll type in the curve into y2. Are we doing okay? I'll type it in. Okay. Before you hit graph, we gotta hit window because we gotta make sure that we can see this graph appropriately. Okay, so x min and max, we said the t values represented time of her layover in hours. So what's the lowest amount of hours that she might have? Zero, okay. What's the highest amount of hours she might have? Say it again. 24, how do we know 24? It said a one day layover, right? So we can say 24. We're going from zero to 24, what do you want to count by? ones, twos, fives, tens, fours, it could be anything. You choose whatever you want. Okay. Um, let's do the Y's. That was total money. What's the lowest amount of money she might have? Zero if she loses it all, yeah? We know she goes negative, right? We just don't know how much she goes negative. So maybe we'll say negative 10, okay? We can always go back and change it. That's what's nice. What's the most amount of money you think she might have? Do we know that? No, okay. Can you perhaps look at the equation and think about how much money she's starting with? Yeah, what do you think, Cole? How'd you know that? It's the y-intercept. If you were to plug in zero for all those t's, that's how much you'd be left with. Okay, so that's how much she's starting with. She may gain some money, so maybe we got to go above the 180. Maybe we'll go to 200. We can always go back and change it if we need to. So we're going from negative 10 to 200. What do you want to count by? 5, 10, 15, 20s, 50s, doesn't matter. Um, 20? We'll do 20. Okay. So we all have in the same equations. We all have the same window. Let's hit graph and they should all look the same. So there's our 80 and there's our graph. Okay. So if you look at it, you see this little bit in the very corner, but then we don't see it again until over here. Can we visualize how it's going up and then coming back down? Okay, we might want to see the very top of that graph. So we don't really have our window set appropriately just yet. Let's go ahead and back to window. If we want to make our graph go higher, or at least see the graph higher, we're going to have to change our y value. Because the highest it goes right now is 200. We want to go higher than that. What do you want to do? 250? Okay, let's go ahead and hit 250 and then hit graph. Oh, we're super close. We gotta get a little bit higher than 250. All right, hit window. Maybe we'll do 280. There 
There we go. Is that better? We can see the whole thing? All right. So where on this graph should we be looking to answer this question? When does she have $80? Can we estimate it or maybe find it exactly? Where should we be looking? Good, Sebastian? The intersection point. All right, let's hit trace. Move your spider to where you think it is. It kind of looks like 11.23 something. Okay, but we can find it exactly. Let's practice these buttons, okay? Second, trace. That's going to bring up kind of the main menu for everything. We'll go to intersect and hit enter. Move the cursor to where you think it is, and then what do you do? Enter three times. One, two, three. All right, so with that word intersection, you're no, you know it's giving you the exact crossing point. So 11.179. So a little bit into the 11th hour, she had $80. We doing okay? So far? Okay. Um, the bell's going to ring in a little bit. We will stop there for today. Keep working on some of the homework problems from this section over the weekend and bring in questions on Monday if you have them. We'll wrap up three and four on Monday, all right? You guys have a good weekend.